Hey guys and welcome to Nomadic Dmitry channel. It's your daily portion of Russian accent and exploring retro technologies like this. So in this case it's iMac 2006 and as you can imagine, I mean, I, have, <laughs> I had this device for quite long. I mean, I just had it forever. It's actually my first Mac and I have a videos about this one actually. I've been using Snow Leopard on this one. I mean, I've been using this occasionally actually, not, not all the time of course. So I have Snow Leopard right here and I've decided to actually what if I install Linux right here. So the Snow Leopard which is installed right here is a good operating system. I, I think it's actually the best operating system that Apple ever made. I mean, it's very polished, very nice, very cool. But the main problem with Snow Leopard and using this one in 2021 is that it's not really polished for the modern usage in terms of like web browsers. There are still web browsers available like Arctic Fox. You can install and run modern uh, websites here. Like you can open modern websites here. But I mean, I don't feel like it's stable. It doesn't feel like it's stable actually. There are some problems with that. So instead of just using Snow Leopard, I thought like, okay, I probably should install Linux here, right? I mean, this is just like a logical solution. I used to have Windows here, Windows 10, and it was kind of, it was, it was working okay there. But I thought that um, Linux would be logical solution solution, right? And what Linux I thought? Mm, I think Lubuntu actually. The Lubuntu is like really good one. Why? Because it's actually just like optimized for the low-end hardware like this one. Because this one has a Core 2 Duo processor, guys. You, you just imagine. Core 2 Duo processor in 2021. I mean, can you imagine that? But I mean, it still works. <laughs> and you can still open the web just fine here. But you need to have specific software installed and not Mac OS. It should be Linux. Let me actually prove it to you and let me show you how Linux works in this machine. So so if you want to install Lubuntu on this machine and of course like there are two options right the first option is gonna be just install it over Mac OS and just like completely erase everything and just have Lubuntu installed or the second option is going to be installing this one side by side we know that Ubuntu handles that pretty well so if, for example if you install alongside Windows it just like handles that fine and the same goes with installation alongside Mac OS so we just need to go to Lubuntu website press download right here the website is lubuntu.net and we need to find actually the version 18.04 this version it seems to be like better for that specific hardware all right and we need to download this one 32-bit version so you just need to download not this one but just scroll down 18.04.5 desktop 32-bit that's what we need actually so just download this image and burn this one on a DVD like for example I have this DVD right here I'm not sure about flash drive guys I'm just like a old-school guy I just use this kind of DVD drives and and this Mac is equipped with a DVD drive, so like why not use it? So I think it's a good, it's just a common sense guys, use DVD drives when necessary. So next we need to prepare our computer for that. In order to install the Linux on our machine, we first need to partition our drives properly. So for that reason we open the disk utility, then we go to the drive we want to install this one on, we go to the partition, and here as you can see there's a snow leopard and there are two other partitions. Basically in most cases you're just gonna have a single partition like this, like snow leopard or something you don't need to format this partition all you need to do is just basically free up space so in my case I have those two partitions right here I should actually if I want to install it once again I should actually remove those and just have a free space here so just leave some free space for the installation of Linux and that way you actually are prepared for the installation so the next step after you prepared your disk drive for the installation all you need to do is just to reboot and while you reboot just hold on the option key and make sure the DVD drive is right here in the drive and you're gonna boot from the DVD and just select like uh, start Linux without installation. And then on the desktop, just select the Lubuntu installation file and just follow the instructions. All you need to select there is actually like uh, install alongside Mac OS. It's just gonna handle everything. So basically just follow this installation and just like follow all the steps. This way you're gonna install the Ubuntu right here, like on, the, on this partition. It's gonna basically automatically resize all those partitions and format those, it's very easy. But there's one more step because once you actually install all that, you're gonna be boot it back into Mac OS, which is not what you what you want, right? You actually want to be able to select which operating system you want to boot. So for this reason, we need to actually install the specific bootloader. The bootloader which we're gonna use to basically select which operating system we want to boot, either Mac OS or Linux, is this one. This is the RFI-T. Actually, I have a video about the later modification of this project, like a new project, but this one is the one we need to use. So RFI-T.SourceForge.net. So basically this URL right here. And we just 
just gonna download the latest version from there. Once it's downloaded, basically we're just gonna open the DMG file and we're just gonna open this one. So this is the installation of this uh, bootloader. So once you download this installer, all you need to do is just basically launch this installer right here, follow the instructions and then reboot. And then you're gonna be presented with the bootloader and you're gonna select how you're going to boot from the Mac OS or Linux. Again, very, very easy, but you need to make sure you install this one. Let's go ahead and reboot and see how it works. All right, guys, so we just rebooted and we have those two options right here. It's either Mac, we can boot into the Mac once again, or we can select Linux, which is just installed right here. So let's boot into the Linux. And for some reason, the keyboard doesn't work in my case. You might have better luck using the keyboard, but for me, I don't know, the keyboard on this menu specifically doesn't work. I don't know what's the reason for that, guys. It just, like, for some reason doesn't really handle that well. All right, come on, boot it up. All right, so we're booted, <laughs> and for some reason it shows for me that system program problem detected. I mean, I don't know why. Let's just cancel this one. Seems like it's working fine for me. I don't know why. You can see just have some application installed right here. For example, the My Favorite Dust Box, of course, and Midnight Commander installed. It all works just fine. But you're probably wondering how actually the web browsing is working on those machines. So let's go ahead and open Chromium, for example. I installed both Chromium and Firefox. So both are available here and work pretty well, I would say. So how about we open YouTube right here and let's actually watch one of my videos about hey guys, and thank you for watching this video so as you can see the playback is just fine so I have no problems it says 720 how about we increase this one 1080 usually works fine here but in this case it's 1080 at 60 so that's why I just like I don't know uh, have some problems with it just imagine how problematic 4k is gonna be but how about we play something like 4k for example how about this one let's set this one for the 4k and as you can see it's kind of choppy I would say <laughs> the playback of 4k is not that good I would say it's not manageable but if you lower this this one to the typical 1080 something it's it's manageable 30 fps plays just fine so I don't know how about we open Firefox just for the change and see how it works let's open one of my articles on medium and just like see how it uh, works all right so as you can see the scrolling is totally fine it seems to be operating fine I don't know I had no problems just browsing the web here it just seems to be working fine pretty nice actually let's actually open the terminal guys like how about that all right guys so this one is is able to handle uh, websites just fine like modern website the YouTube playback is fine and of course you can just always use terminal when you need it for example how about uh, try this stuff docker run hello world come on stop asking me for that stuff and here we go guys basically docker works just fine you can install apps here typical way everything that you expect is actually working fine here but guys remember that this one is actually a 32-bit operating system so if you want to actually update it let's see what it says so it's basically downloading all the packages and let's see sorry there are no more upgrades for this system it actually says like ubuntu 1804 will continue until 2023 or 426 so basically we have a couple more years until it actually stops receiving more updates the thing is that we can use this system until until browsers are supported, right? And once the support for the Firefox and Chromium is dropped for this operating system, then we might have some problems. So guys, it's not only about the support of the system when it's gonna be dropped, because Snow Leopard was dropped like how many years ago, right? Many, many years ago. And there are still like web browsers available. I mean, it doesn't work that good, but it's still available. This machine still receives updates, but mostly it receives security patches. I'm actually amazed that this system can work like five more years, I guess, or something. It's quite possible, I mean, it still handles stuff well so this is basically what i like about all those intel macs nowadays we all transition to arm platform and i can assure you that with this arm it's not going to be the same way it's not going to be the same way i actually like the intel macs in some way because it's actually still upgradable this one is still upgradable because i changed the ssd here I upgrade the ssd and it still works fine all right guys thank you for watching please subscribe there'll be many many more videos and i hope it was fun just like playing around with this old system i hope it was fun <laughs> all right thank you guys